I'd like to say something about the nature of collaboration because I've been working collaboratively w ideally with playwrights since the very first piece we did in 1971 or something uh, and it's rare to find a playwright you can collaborate with very many of them the word is law and what is written is uh, etched in stone and nothing can be changed and there are actors who like to work that way too. I don't like to work that way. I, I feel that the most um, amazing ideas come out of working freely amongst people because 12 ideas will you know, yield one that's better than anything you can think of in the privacy of your own room. So um, not too many playwrights will work that way. Howard will. He also can sit home and write plays. <laughs> and both. <laughs> uh, but it's um, in the two pieces that we worked on together, Living with History, which um, was about Camus Sartre and Simone de Beauvoir that took place during um, occupied the, op the German occupation of Paris and uh, on the border, which you'll t you can talk about the pieces. Mm. We worked with a group of actors Howard and I would sit around, the actors would improvise stuff, he'd write something, we'd try it out with the mm. actors, um, we'd make a, a few adjustments, they'd work again, um, somebody might have an idea if we were lucky, or they'd go home and then have an idea, and the piece got more involved and more involved, and hopefully Barbara better and better. Barbara was really open theater, and they had developed um, additional techniques. The actors were physically with the words, with the suggestions, to create that whole visceral fiesta with words, music, and other elements, and movement. And it became something else that came out of the collaborative process. Like taking the words of a song, and, and we had the words of a song, and we didn't have the melody of the song, and you know, finally we figured out, oh, it must be to March Lorraine, because that was the, 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 uh, the, free, the resistance fighters mm -hmm. anthem during, during the war. And uh, we worked with the composers, we worked with, uh, people just contributed highly to, to the process. And um, it, it takes a special kind of person. And I think, well, socially also, one is trying to get a society that works collaboratively instead of antagonistically or, or well behaved, not well behaved, uh, <laughs> mechanically, I guess is the opposite of it. Um, is it hard to find these people? Um, or they just come to you, right? Speaking, uh, we just did a play where two of them really hated the idea of not being told what to do from the, from the get-go. <clears throat> and they thought I didn't know what I was doing because I couldn't tell them exactly every move to make. And I got, uh, the best way to find them is through other people who know what you're doing. There are some actors who, who like the idea of having two hours in the day where they know exactly what's going to happen next and they don't have to have a moment's indecision or, or, or decision making. And um, <clears throat> then the good actors are the ones who show the audience what it's like to be alive. I think there's an element uh, in the actor or the writer who will take a risk and plunge into things, not knowing exactly where it's going to quite come out. And a lot of times the result is remarkable, exciting, and wonderful. Sometimes it doesn't work. But that's part of the process, and that you don't use that. It may have been an interesting experience to try it, and it didn't work, but more often than not, it adds to the piece. It gives it a greater life. It gives you, in microcosm, even at the time of the play and the rehearsal period of the weeks of the rehearsal, the possibility of people really working. I don't know how to say it exactly, but there's a sort of sharing of the unconscious that somewhere you, when you get into a place where everybody is creating together, 
it's a it's an extraordinary place and nobody is char in charge it's kind of you're swimming with well <laughs> with the, with the flow as for um, no it doesn't always work and sometimes things have to be cut and sometimes actors then get upset because their brainchild didn't make it to uh, to full production but again uh, we had we had a choreographer once whose father was in the navy and she said I don't understand what actors get so nervous about the stakes are so low nobody's going to die <laughs> <laughs> and, and in a way, it's true. An ensemble piece with all these different characters, which were probably figments of his imagination. And you use the strength when you're working with live actors. You begin to use the strengths of the actors to fill the characters a little bit. So, you know, Death, who was a dancer, um, became even more of a dancer. I think it was Death. Um, and uh, we just did another piece called uh, Wall Street, which was written in 1819. Wall Street, a farce in three acts that was written in 1819, really. And people have, who know about it said it's exactly what's happening now. And Howard wrote a, a, a short piece for the prologue to it. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's about three rich men wooing a dollar, a dollar who is the, 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 lovely, um, the lovely lady dollar. And... Um, it was very, it's very funny and very to the point. And I mean, that's another, you know, way where you can uh, say to somebody, well, I didn't like that piece, so I'm not going to use it, but I am going to use this piece, and they're not going to get all, all huffy puffy. Because um, we have had uh, playwrights around who get all huffy puffy, um, as if, you know, their word is, is sacrosanct and so on. Um, and it, it's, it's so much about that thing that I, I have a cartoon on my desk that has a bunch of little things and then one little thing I mean there I can't remember who the cartoonist is and the the bunch of them are saying to the other one where do you get your ideas and um, one never knows do one uh, you know so having actors milling about saying your words uh, or milling about and uh, not saying your words but moving to your words as if they were music or something it, it helps that process because we're we all directors writers actors we're waiting for the moment of epiphany <laughs> where something really true and really connected and really alive comes out of us and we're so thankful that it does on occasion.